let us just take a moment to spotlight a story that just really made us feel weird, made us feel wild. Uh, you know, however, it just stood out to us. Glenn Flamberg, what story made you go, whoa, this week? You know, Trav, something came out this week that was just very unusual, and it involves one of my fashion style, beauty, everything icons. Of course, I'm talking about Kate Moss because Kate Moss is always a good idea. Kate Moss revealed on a BBC show that when she did that Calvin Klein ad back in 1992, you know, the one with Mark Wahlberg where she was sort of facing him and she was topless. You could see her little nipples. She said that she felt scared, vulnerable. And you know, what was so wild about this story is that Kate Moss has never really said anything, (laughs) you know, until she testified at the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial when she so graciously came clean about, you know, her experience with Johnny that he had never pushed her downstairs. Now you just can't stop her talking. She's telling us everything. I want to hear what she has to say next. But basically she said that when she did that ad, Mark Wahlberg was sort of like very, quote, macho. He has admitted to being rough around the edges at that point in his life. And she was, you know, as she says, quote, just the model. That was really her first big ad. It's what put her on the map right after she was discovered. She ushered in the era of the waif model. So, you know, I can understand now that she felt that way, but I don't think that anybody has ever like heard about chinks in Kate Moss's fame armor. So I, I it made me go well. I agree. And how was she? Dur- how old was she during that? Um... <laughs> Uh, campaign. I believe she was seven. Oh, okay. I thought she was much, much younger. So that's great. We can get down with that. Yeah. Please, please never be quiet. Never be quiet, Kate Moss. You have found your voice. Speak it again. Sarah Huron, is yours about a supermodel? Is your woe of the week about a supermodel as well? Maybe, just maybe. He might not be a supermodel, but he did dabble in modeling. I also <laughs> want to give a quick shout out to Adrena Patrish's book, since we were going to talk about another book later. Some interesting tea in that one, my latest celebrity read. Um, she almost dated Leonardo DiCaprio. He like hit on her hard um, in that. Vegas. And Kevin Connolly hit on her hard. She, Chris, she dated Chris Pine. She dated Chase Crawford. Like a lot of name dropping and choices by Adrena Patrish. So if you're looking for a beach read, um, I recommend Us Weekly's Revelations from Adrena's book um, for <laughs> <laughs> but my woe goes to Tyler Cameron and Matt James. Um, I had the pleasure of interviewing Tyler in San Francisco over the weekend. And it just so happened it was right when all this was going on about the rumors about him and Matt James no longer being friends. And in case you didn't know, Matt and Tyler met in college back in like 2012. They were friends long before Tyler was on The Bachelorette. Um, and Tyler starred him on The Bachelorette and best friendship with Matt James is what made Matt James the eventual bachelor. And They're really close, live together in New York City, and Matt has obviously been with Rachel since his season of the show last year, on and off, but going very strong as of late. And people have noticed that Tyler and Matt, like, don't really see each other that much, or they're not photographed together that often, and they used to be, like, inseparable. And there was rumors that it was because of Rachel, because on Watch What Happens Live a couple months ago, Matt described their relationship as love-hate, Tyler and Rachel's. So I asked Tyler about Rachel, and he said that at the time, when they were all kind of living together in New York, he was going through his own shit, we all have our own ways of clash. We have, we just have our own ways of clashing. I don't like listening to people sometimes and she's strong and has good opinions on a lot of things. And sometimes I just don't want to hear it. They're very happy, but I think we clash because we're passionate people and what we believe in, but we've also learned from each other. So that's good. They're good for each other. They keep each other happy. Yada, yada. But he used the word clash several times. So implying that I don't think Matt James and um, I don't think Rachel Kirkconnell and Tyler Cameron get along too well. Well, we know, this you know, a hoe can break up the bros. Oh, yes. That should be my lead, Gwen. <laughs> that okay. should definitely be the lead. Please <laughs> go uh, fix it now. Yes. Um, it sounds like he was having issues and she tried to give him help and he didn't like that. What did you take? What was the subtext here? Okay. I kind of think that, yet yeah, Tyler was single. This time last year, Tyler was dating Camila Kendra. And then that relationship ended kind of abruptly. So I think maybe... Rachel was like giving like kind of mad, like giving him relationship advice or like telling him what to do. And Tyler was like, no, or like in his singleness was maybe being a little bit of an F boy and didn't want Matt to be part of that. 
because they were in a stable relationship and Tyler was single again. Or, you know, some people were saying, you know, we clash because we have strong opinions. Could that be like a political thing? Oh, yeah, perhaps. But he did, Tyler did say a few times, you know, we get older, people are in relationships or they're not. And like, you see your friends and you see them like, we're good. Um, But he didn't know his friend was running the London Marathon. I had to inform him of that because Matt James told me, but didn't tell Tyler Cameron. So take that as what you will with that piping hot tea. Wow. (laughs) Tyler didn't run the marathon, but he was supposed to, right? In San Francisco. Yeah, I thought he was running it, but he wasn't. He was there to support the degree, had like three runners running um, and he like, trained them oh nice well yeah. you know, we met him after he had run the new york marathon oh did you yes because our friend andy dorfman ran the new york marathon mm-hmm. that year and there was a little party for her um the National the Nation. Of course, and yes and 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 tyler was there and all i have to say is that even after running what is it 26.2 miles 24.2 mm-hmm. miles i'm not quite sure but he still looked smoking hot he may be one of the prettiest people to be um if you have ever have the pleasure of being in his company you are it's it's quite striking yeah. he looks better in person doesn't he he's so much taller yeah he's quite um, tall his hand the handshake okay. i was quite shook <laughs> <laughs> well god this is a uh, tyler c appreciation <laughs> podcast today well mine is not about any of those people at all um mine is about uh what i'm buzzing about is sort of the gift of giving a goat i saw it on real housewives of dubai season one and now uh kevin hart has gifted chris rock a goat uh this was a symbol for greatest all oh greatest of all time they are touring right now uh at a comedy show and Kevin Hart gave Chris Rock this goat and he named it Will Smith, which seemed a little shady at their Madison Square Garden show. Um, the audience broke out in laughter when he did this. Um, and Kevin Hart said, the goat took a shit on stage. Um, it wasn't planned either. That's the one thing I didn't think about. I was going to come up and do this tight two minutes. But instead, I gave him a goat and he destroyed Chris's shoes because he pooped on them. Chris had on some moon boot shoots and that goat got him. I I just thought this was amazing. I mean, giving someone a live goat is very real housewives of Dubai. And I guess it's just trending. So when you go to your next dinner party, forgo that bottle of wine or bouquet of flowers and please just bring them a goat because it seems to be what all the stars in Hollywood are doing. And feel free to name it Will Smith if you really want to be on brand. Hey everyone, I'm Christina Garibaldi, the host of Us Weekly Celebrity Coverage. Don't forget to hit subscribe for the latest celebrity news, tips, and video. And for much more content, make sure you head on over to usmagazine.com, the official home of Us Weekly Magazine.